The cannons have ceased firing. The fighting has stopped, but the dangers have not stopped. If we are to form the United States of Europe, or whatever name it may take, we must begin now. We must recreate the European family in a regional structure called, it may be, the United States of Europe. And the first practical step would be to form a Council of Europe. If at first all the states of Europe are not willing or able to join the Union, we must nevertheless proceed to assemble and combine those who will and those who can. Madam Deputy Speaker, this is the 70th anniversary year of Churchill's speech on the cause of a united Europe at Zurich on the 19th of September 1946. Of course, the speech was a speech of great prescience and great vision, and it was also a speech of the most profound analysis. And I will, if I may, unlike most of my other honourable friends and other gentlemen in this House, reflect at a little more distance from Britain's experience of the European Union, and in particular my party's long-standing commitment to the European cause. Madam Deputy Speaker, reflect for a moment on the sight of what Europe must have looked like, the tragedy of what Europe must have looked like in 1945. It's worth the House reflecting on it. It's only in the winking of an eye in terms of time and history. It was only 71 years ago that the Germans surrendered to the Allies and signed the Instrument of Surrender. It was only 70 years ago that the Russians drew down the Iron Curtain on a broken and suffering Eastern Europe. And behind that line, in the wicked grip of a ruthless regime, lay all the great capitals and states of Eastern Europe. Warsaw, Prague, Berlin, Bucharest, Sofia. Most of the rest of continental Europe lay shattered and broken after six years of war for the second time in 25 years. There remained a vast mass of bewildered human beings who gazed forlornly at the wreckage of their homes, their nations, their lives, their families, their possessions everything that they loved. But from that awful scene of desolation, of sadness, of ruin and despair, little over 70 years ago, something truly remarkable has been achieved, which has brought freedom, security and prosperity way beyond the dreams that anyone alive at that time would ever have contemplated. For not only have the sovereign states of Europe risen phoenix-like from the ashes of two world wars, but they have created of their own free will a European Union of 28 members, comprising the biggest and most powerful single trade market in the world of 500 million people, in which we travel with our fellow Europeans in prosperity, in peace, and in a constantly expanding era of cooperation prosperity, security, safety and freedom. And when the Cold War ended and the Berlin Wall came down on that glorious cold 9th of November 1989, the Warsaw Pact collapsed into dust without ever a shot being fired. Most of the Eastern European countries joined the European Union and most of them also joined NATO. Indeed, there are only six countries who are members of the European Union, who are not members of NATO. And why did they join? Because, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Europe and the NATO that they joined were and are prosperous, secure and free. And they wanted, just as soon as they could, to find shelter in those institutions who had benefit, benefited from a period of peace, stability, freedom and security unprecedented in a thousand years of European history. 
and which would protect them from a still predatory Russia. There is no argument, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the European Union was absolutely central to these developments. And it is a very great credit to our country that we should have played such a leading role in seeing all this through. Sir Winston Churchill, British Prime Minister from 1940 to 1945 and 1951 to 1955, is recognised as one of the 11 founding fathers of the European Union. Following the Second World War, he was convinced that only a united Europe could guarantee peace. His aim was to eliminate the European ills of nationalism and warmongering once and for all.